I'm an idiot. This is a public service announcement for anyone that is using a Makita Mitosite. One of my biggest bugbears with my old saw was this knob. I hope this has helped someone. You're welcome if it has. Let's keep moving. Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations where we tackle everything DIY and this week we're making some upgrades to the Mitosaur station with two new tools. Let's roll the intro and get to work. All right, a little bit of a different video for you today because although it's not a build video, I thought I would bring you along as I make some changes to my Mitosaur station. I built this back in 2019 and for the last three years, it's been absolutely fantastic and a workhorse for the workshop. It is packed full of storage and it works perfectly for my workflow, but I just need to make a couple of changes because we've got some new tools in the Small Fry workshop. Some of the changes I've made over the last three years is I've put some storage in up the top here to house particular items, which works really well and these two drawers. In the video when I made it, I had a sliding router table and although it worked really well, I just didn't use it all that much. So I pulled that out and built two drawers, but I built them quickly and to be honest, they're too big and they're being underutilized. So that we're also going to change in this video. So first off, let me show you the new tools that we've got and then we can talk about how we're going to make some changes and hopefully by the end of this video, we have an even better Mitosaur station. The two new tools in the Small Fry Workshop is the 40 volt, 260 mil sliding compound mitosaur. Man, that is a mouthful. And also the Makita vacuum. And I should start by saying this is a total want of an upgrade. It is not a need. The Makita sliding saw behind me works totally fine. But there are a couple of reasons why I wanted to upgrade. Firstly, I like moving to battery tools where I can and the 40 volt system makes sense because in the package comes two batteries so I can have one on charge and one powering the saw. The second reason is because of the vacuum. I can set it up so that it is wireless. So when I start up the miter saw, it'll automatically start up the vacuum. And the third reason is the sliding mechanism. It takes up less of a footprint and the current saw I have, this knob sticks out and I cannot tell you how many times I have hit it and the permanent bruises that I have on my hip. So I am hoping to be able to get the saw further back and get rid of this knob sticking out so that I can have my hips bruise free and back again. So let's get these unboxed, have a look at them and then we can talk about how we're gonna fit them into the Mitosaur station. Right, these are beasts of tools is my first impression. When you pay more than you would normally from your big box store like Bunnings or whatever, you can tell there's a difference in just the build quality alone of going up that extra price point. These things are beefy and solid. If you're interested in what I paid, I purchased them from Sydney Tools and they had a promo between Christmas and New Year where if you spent over a certain amount, you got dollars back in points. So for the vacuum and the Mitosaur, it cost me $2,660. And then that got me $500, I'm pretty sure, in points, which I used some of those points to purchase the wireless things that I needed to turn these things wireless. And then I've still got points sitting there to purchase other things. So I think that's a pretty good deal. I'm really happy with it. The next thing I need to do is actually start to pull apart the Mitosaur station, because I'm not 100% sure how this is all going to fit in. I have a kind of a plan in my mind, but the first thing I think we should do is get everything out that I don't want, and then we can work out how we're gonna fit everything in. So let's move these tools off camera and start demolition. I should be wearing a dust mask for this. Let me put one on. If I could find it. Probably should also be wearing some safety glasses so that I don't get dust in my eyes. This is much better. That needs some cleanup.
All right, I've got the saw sitting up here just for the time being. And the first thing I noticed as soon as it came up is it has these rails on it, which is good because you need them if you're using this not in a miter saw station. But because I am, I actually want to remove them because it's just cutting into the width and I want to cut down on the width wherever possible. I went to go and remove them and they were getting stuck. It has this little ring here which sits underneath it. If you get a flathead screwdriver, you can pop it off, which is what I've done on this side here. And now that I loosen it, these slide straight out, which makes it that just that little bit narrower. I should be able to now get it in here. So if I flick this around to 90, 90, move these out of the way, I should <laughs> be able to slide this in. Okay, I'm definitely gonna have to make some more adjustments, I think, because I need to get the knob that goes here so that I can screw it in because I want to get this as back as far as I can so that that knob is not sticking out because I do not want my hips getting bruised anymore. This side is definitely going to have to be shortened, which is fine. Let me play around with it a little more, get this fitting right, and then we can talk about the next problems, whatever they are, and how I'm going to solve them. This is a public service announcement for anyone that is using a Makita miter saw. I don't know if this is with other brands, but I'm an idiot. One of my biggest bugbears with my old saw was this knob, and it's the same on here. These, my friends, is just a grip handle. The only time it is actually needed is when I'm using the saw that is not at a predetermined angle where the saw just drops into it, be it 22 and a half or 30 degrees or 45, it's locked into place. It's only when it's in an odd angle that you need this thing. So I could have the entire time had this removed and just sitting in a drawer and only get it out on the one time a year that I'm gonna cut some odd angle because 90% of the time I'm cutting at a predetermined angle. If you like me, follow the instructions and put this in here and not 100% know why it's there. I hope this has helped you. I'm going to share it with you because I'm sure someone else out there is going to have the same problem, surely. And if you need this for something else to, and I don't know, let me know in the comments. Am I crazy? Do I need to have this? Can I have it removed and just use it on those rare occasions that I'm cutting an odd angle? So we're not going to install the handle at this stage. And I'm going to move on and try and work out how I'm going to fit it in here. I hope this has helped someone. You're welcome if it has. Let's keep moving. Okay, so the plot thickens. I've got the saw not really in its position, but what I wanted to check was its level to the miter saw station because there was every chance I was gonna have to change it. And that's exactly what I have to do. I've run a level across the top of the workbench is 102 mil. And when I take a level and put it on here and take this measurement, it is 99 mil. So I am three mil higher on the timber than I want to be. So it does mean I'm gonna to have to pull the top section off. This is why when you build workshop furniture, don't use glue. I've done this on purpose. I can pull this off, shorten all of these pieces by three mil, put the top back on. I am gonna to have to push the fence back also because this is sitting, I don't want it sitting any further out. So I'm gonna move the fence back also, which is not a big deal, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that, get it down so that it's exactly level to start with. And then I can work out if I need to make any more adjustments before saying it's in its place and move on to the vacuum. Bingo. Okay, it was four mil, not three mil. Should note that. I'm also gonna have to cut all the boxes down by four mil, but I'm gonna leave that till the end because I've set the table saw. I know it now needs to be cut down. So I'm gonna pull everything apart, cut down what I need to do without moving the table saw. Then I'll worry about the, the inserts. Okay, things are looking up. We're getting better. 
We're improving. Let's keep moving. to get there and it's starting to look better. I've got everything now totally level. It's come down at that four mil. But I now, the next issue that I have is whether or not I want to put that back fence back in. And to be honest, it was never really helpful. The only thing it was helpful for was a stop block. And I've seen tons of people since I've built this put in a system where they just have the T-Track in the bench and they have a stop block that runs along it without the fence. Also, this is really beefy. I don't think we're going to need any more fence support than what is already here. So I am going to use the same T-Track that I had on the fence, I've taken it off, and I'm going to route in a groove here and then I'm going to put a stop block system in that way. I think that will be easier. Also, just a little bit cleaner, a little bit flatter, and then once I've got that routed in, I'm gonna sand everything and give it a new coat of finish because, to be honest, it hasn't been done in three years, probably needs to be done also. I think this is looking good. I'm happy with it so far. Let's go ahead and route this groove. All right, let's check in and see where we're at with the project. I've taken away the dust collection, capped that off. That's all done. I've also cut down the drawers so that they all now fit in. Everything is level. I have sanded back and applied a coat of clear onto the top so they are looking much better. The T-Track is installed. That's all now working. I haven't made a stop block for it yet. I will, but for now, I want to move on. The Mitosaur is in basically its final position. I haven't secured it down though because I wanna make sure I've got the vacuum in the right position and then I will secure it just in case I have to move it. So now that the top half is all done, we can move to the second tool, which is the vacuum. That is going to go down here. So I'm gonna pull out these drawers, have a look at what's inside, what I need to do to get that vacuum installed. And what I'm hoping to do is have the vacuum take up one side and then have drawers going down the other. I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna go. We'll get to that shortly but the first thing we need to do is get everything out, have a look at what we're playing with, and then we can start to make some changes and get the vacuum installed. All right, before I get too far, I wanna test the vacuum and the saw, make sure everything is working. I don't wanna go along with the install and then find right at the end something's not working and I have to take it all back out. I've got the wireless set up here, I've got the chip inside, I've done the same with the saw and I've already paired it so it should technically work. I am now going to turn everything on. I have turned the vacuum on just because I wanted to make sure that I had power running to it and it started making an odd noise and so I had to stop and read the manual. The manual is rubbish as a side note. I contacted a friend online that I know has a similar vacuum to ask him the question and he said yes it does make a weird noise and it's the auto cleaning. I'm going to turn it on for you so you can hear what the auto cleaning sounds like so that you don't freak out like I did when I turned it on for the first time. It kind of sounds like a car is backfiring. Here we go. That sound that you hear there is the auto cleaning. Now you can turn the dial past the on switch further around and then that will turn off the auto cleaning. I don't know which way is the better way to go now but for the time being, I want everyone to know about that sound. So the vacuum is working, it all works really well. I'm gonna turn it to auto, and I'm gonna go past the auto clean just so that you don't hear that noise as I start up the saw. 
hopefully it works. Let's test the saw out. Everything works. The vacuum keeps running for around about 10 seconds once you've switched off the saw, but it all sounds good. I think now we can get it in. I'm gonna put everything in and call it a night because it's been a long day and I'm really happy with the progress I've already made in a day. So let's go ahead, get this in, and then I'll see you in a second, but it'll be a new day for me. <sighs> this workshop is a hot mess right now and it is overwhelming and stressing me out having all this stuff out on surfaces. So let's get building and build some drawers. perfectly. I used a 32 millimeter spade bit to drill the holes which will now act as my handle so I can open the drawers. They're working absolutely perfect. So it is time to clean up these workbenches, get this stuff put away, reorganized, and then we can start to tackle the dust collection. Do not underestimate the power of a clean workshop because it feels so good to be in here. The workshop is the cleanest it's been in a really long time and it feels good to have the workbenches cleared, stuff put away in drawers and in their new homes. And these three drawers are working out so much better than the previous two big drawers. Although these drawers are less than half of the width of the old drawers, I've actually got more space. The bottom drawer currently really is empty. I've got vacuum parts temporarily stored in there, but really that is empty and I can grow into the space. So it's working out so much better than what was here before. The last piece of the puzzle is the vacuum hose that I need to run up to the miter saw. What I need to do now is pull out the workbench. Luckily it's on wheels and I can get to the back of it, see where I need to drill the holes and do that and then run the piping. And then that's really it. And we can wrap up this project. So let's pull out the workbench and get to work. wrap on this project. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. These three drawers in particular are much better than the two drawers that were there before. The miter saw is taking up a smaller footprint now that I've worked out the grip handle situation and I can bring the saw forward creating me that much more space at the back. 
And it should be noted, I could have shimmed the saw to match the workbench instead of lowering the workbench, but I'm glad I took the time to lower it. It's a more permanent solution. It's not gonna fall out of level at any time. I'm glad that I did that step. I've also been able to rearrange the workshop. I can rotate the dust collector now that I don't have ducting running this way because it's only permanently being run to the table saw and I switch it over to the thicknesser when I'm using it. It does give me limitations to the miter saw. I can't have timber running out this way, so I'm gonna live with it for a while and see how I like it. But it means I can empty the dust collector much easier than I could before. Now in terms of the dust collection for the miter saw, it's still yet to be seen how great the vacuum is. I haven't used it all that much. I have cleaned down the walls and the dust collector so that I can start to get a sense of the dust that it creates and collects. So if you're interested in that, be sure to be subscribed to the channel as it will evolve over time. So I hope you've liked this video. If you have, help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons or do me one better and go and watch one of the videos that's about to pop up on your screen and I'll see you on the next one.